Earlier this year, I started a series called John Tries New Things, testing out the latest and greatest things that racing games have to offer, whether that be brand new releases or DLC packs and updates for existing titles. Well, last week I was at Spa, and this week has been a quiet one for new racing game content. And I happen to be ill. So instead of me trying out the new tyre model in R-Factor 2, or the new force feedback update for Automobilista 2, while sounding like I've eaten a gorse bush, or indeed looking like I've fought one, I thought I would take stock. We are now midway through July, so it feels like a good moment to look back and reflect on everything that's happened during the first half of 2022. Which games and DLC packs have we loved, and which have we found underwhelming? I will look at each of the games I've covered in the video series, as well as the games that we as a collective have covered across both the YouTube channel and the Traction website, before looking at what is coming in the latter half of the year. So, without further ado, let's jump back to the end of February and what was a massive week for the racing game industry. And no, I am not talking about the ACC PlayStation 5 port, which certainly wasn't without its faults, shall we say. I am talking about the release of Grid Legends. And Gran Turismo 7, of course. <laughs> Let's actually start with Grid Legends, as it's a bit easier to unpack. This game was fun, something a bit different, and built around a fictional story mode, designed in the spirit of Drive to Survive and the older Grid titles. It went in a different direction to F1 2021's breaking point, using actors and a more, shall we say, Hollywood-driven narrative, rather than trying to create something fully realistic in a sporting sense. I liked it. I thought it was fun to play through, and I even did so on traction through a series of live streams and videos, and I liked that it didn't take itself too seriously. It was all over fairly quickly though, and nothing really drew me back into the game until recently when we saw the first of four major DLC drops expected within the year. Quite simply, there were too many other racing games for me that had a more intriguing long-term hook, and although the additional Demolition Derby story element was fun to play, it wasn't enough on its own to convince me otherwise. A game that we are, in general, fond of, but not in love with. Gran Turismo 7 is a far more complex beast. We were all blown away initially by the sheer size of the game, or so we thought, and the nostalgia-driven atmosphere. I even wrote a love letter about how special it was. Not long after this, however, things went a little pear-shaped. Changes to the way credits were distributed created a flawed and controversial in-game economy, with it being nigh on impossible to obtain special cars without overpriced microtransactions. Fundamental issues were exposed with the online system, and as the weeks rolled on, it quickly became clear that the game wasn't quite as fast as first hoped. This is still an incredible game in all of the ways I discussed in my love letter, but its flaws leave big scars and leave many users deeply disappointed. Thankfully, Polyphony Digital have been showering us with major updates, including new content and attempted fixes for many of the game's biggest problems. I've still been very much enjoying my time on the game, as you may well have witnessed. I still love it. But does it get near GT4 for me personally? No. Recently, the biggest annual racing game launched in the form of F122. EA are building on a solid foundation, yet somehow this seems to have lost some of its rigidity. Through the cracks you will find some nice new features such as VR support and some superfluous ones such as F1 Life and the inclusion of supercars, but fundamentally this game feels like it wasn't ready for launch, the PC version wasn't at least. On a personal note, I struggled to get it to work properly across a number of machines during launch week, and this seems to be a bit of an unfortunate trend at the moment, with many publishers releasing games that didn't feel ready at the time. So how about some other new games? Milestone's MotoGP 22 built well on its own lineage. Although fundamentally similar to its predecessor, tweaks to the bike's characteristics and the addition of a VR46 story mode created a pleasant change of scenery for bike fans. I loved playing through the opening of Nine during one of these episodes. It was, for me, the most engaging style of narrative-driven content so far this year. Other games such as Red Out 2, Kartcraft, and Monster Energy Supercross 5 were well-received additions to the 2022 racing game roster, whilst the likes of Chocobo GP and MX vs ATV Legends leave much to be desired. Let's move on now to the games which have been around for a bit longer, but continue to be updated. My first ever episode of this new series was based on new Automobilista 2 content, which hardly comes as a surprise given just how good Rise of Studios are with updates. As I mentioned earlier, we have even had a force feedback and physics update this week, and when we are given new content to try, it's always a doozy. I particularly loved my most recent open wheel VR experiences, both in the Kart Champ cars and the 2022 Formula 1, I mean the, the Formula Ultimate Gen 2 car. R Factor 2 is another sim racing title with new content being released at a high pace. The new IndyCar and Laguna Seca have been a lot of fun, but the highlight for me has to be the BTCC cars and tracks. 
Throwing the infinity around Donington National brought me a lot of pleasure, even when lapping on my own, so you can imagine the fun waiting to be had in a proper online race event. Oh, and let's not forget about that sorely needed UI update. It has made a big difference for the more regular players. Just recently I tried out the latest ACC American Track Pack, and despite the three included venues splitting opinions, nobody can deny the quality of these particular versions. Watkins Glen is proving to be one of the most enjoyable circuits on the platform to race on, and let's not forget that previous Challengers DLC pack, Kunos also released four brand new cars. The highlight for me was the new Porsche Cup car. Combine this with the race around Watkins Glen, and you're in for a treat. So these are the standouts for me, but it's also worth touching on the other stuff we've seen. iRacing continued to deliver new content every season, and this year we even saw some DLC content appear from Mario Kart 8. Not a full new game like many fans are after, but at least this will help tide us over in the meantime. BeamNG were quiet early on in 2022, but a recent major update was welcomed with a big hug, let alone open arms. This game remains in a fantastic place. Of course, there are other titles that I haven't been keeping up with personally, but my traction colleagues have. Regular updates and DLC have been appearing on the likes of Hot Wheels Unleashed, The Crew 2, American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator 2, as well as the plucky Track Day R. I really need to revisit that sometime. It's about time then we stopped looking in the mirror and divert our attention to the metaphorical windscreen. What's coming up next? Well, first of all, it's a big one next week. We are finally going to see the launch of the first major Forza Horizon 5 DLC pack. Linking up with Hot Wheels, and not for the first time, this is a big moment for fans of the franchise who have waited a lot longer than usual for a major Horizon update. A lot is riding on this, but I expect some great results based on what we've seen previously, and I can assure you we will be covering this in detail on both the Traction channel and website. We know for sure that there will be at least three more Grid Legends DLC drops within the year, but the specifics are still to be confirmed. We also know that Art of Rally will be releasing a brand new location, Indonesia, in the near future, and iRacing are expected to finally release their hotly anticipated wet weather system. Based on current patterns, we can also expect to see regular GT7 updates, as well as R Factor 2 and Automobilista 2 content drops. But what about brand new racing games? One of the most hotly anticipated amongst the Traction team has to be F1 Manager 22, which releases on the 30th of August. We have some big Frontier fans in our midst, and Tom was invited to try out a preview version last month. If you want to see how that went, make sure you check out our hands-on video. One week later we'll see the release of the Open World Car Wreck Street, a multiplayer city-based racer that appears on the face of it to draw inspiration from the likes of Need for Speed, Juiced and Midnight Club. Another week, another new game. Superbike 22 is expected to launch on the 15th of September, and adds to the growing list of milestone bike racers based on popular real-life series. This one becomes the latest official World Superbike game, and the first for a number of years. Early gameplay footage hints that much of this game's foundations will be based on MotoGP 22, which, well, sort of makes sense, right? WRC Generations also launches later this year and is likely to be the final officially licensed World Rally title from Kiloton before that license switches to Codemasters and EA in 2023. This game is the natural successor of WRC 10 and will be the first to feature the latest generation of Hybrid 1 rally cars. Exciting! Speaking of Rally, we are still waiting to hear more on the current state of Dakar Desert Rally, the official Dakar game. The official Twitter account still boasts of a 2022 release, however we haven't seen or heard any updates for months now, so expect something imminently? Or don't, I guess? One game we definitely have heard about recently is Stuntfest World Tour. This brand new franchise by THQ Nordic and Pow Wow Entertainment pretty much came out of nowhere, and we're all here for it. On paper, this appears to be the perfect blend of what we've all been after. Wreckfest, Fall Guys and Flat Out 2. I for one am ready for whatever the hell this is, and hopefully my playable ragdoll is too. If you're here to find out about Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown or the next Forza Motorsport, then I'm afraid you'll have to wait until 2023. So that's a quick look at the current state of racing games as we pass the midway point of 2022. It's been a mixed year with some massive titles delivering flawed success, and smaller games catching us all by surprise. Let's hope for some great new adventures in the coming weeks and months. Which new game or update are you most looking forward to? Let me know down below, and as always, leave a like if you've enjoyed the video and subscribe so that you don't miss any news or updates on the stuff we've covered today. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, keep it pinned, and have a great day.